You know, sometimes my kids drive me absolutely nuts. I go, I want to just rip out my hair and scream and yell and run around like a freak. Yeah, I imagine you. <laughs> Is it true that our kids are well, attesting to try? Him that <laughs> he pulled his I mean, out. You expect. I don't have any hair, so that's why I you like to see people rip it off. The <laughs> they could be a real trial. Yeah, yeah no. That's yes, what I'm afraid of. <laughs> as a matter of fact, they are a trial, uh, as everything else in life. Um, I remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once, while he was giving the khutbah on the pulpit, delivering a speech. He saw his grandsons, Al Hassan and Al Hussein, and they were tripping in their clothes, over their clothes. So the Prophet ﷺ interrupted his speech, and he descended. He went ahead towards them. He picked them up. Then the Prophet ﷺ addressed the Ummah, saying that, "Sadaq Allahu Al Azim, Inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna. Wallahu Indahu Ajun Al Azim," which means Allah has spoken the truth. Indeed, your wealth and your children are but a trial. And Allah has a great reward with him. So, like everything else in life, wealth and children, also a trial, a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a child, he wants to see how would you raise him, how would you follow the same procedures which he prescribed for you, and the Prophet sallallahu uh, advised us how to raise our children properly. So if you follow those procedures, then you succeeded. And if you don't, then you fail the test. Like everything else in life, as a matter of fact, life itself is, is a, a test. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember an ayah which describes life as a matter of test? That would be one of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a f very famous ayah, very famous surah. It is actually the beginning of Surah Al-Mulk, where mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Blessed be Allah in whose hand is the kingdom and he's able to do all things. The one who created death and life. What is the purpose of creating death and life? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So that he may try you. Which one of you is best in deeds? So life is a test. Wealth is a big test. Yeah. Have any children is a test. And not having any children is also a test. How do you tell the difference between a test and a punishment? Well, you should not really be concerned about whether it's a test or a punishment. You should be concerned about how to pass a test. Now we're in a situation. Allah bestows children on you. Your wife conceives and you have a son or a daughter. You're supposed to see what you're supposed to do. Okay? not have any children it could be a test it could be a punishment he cannot recognize that but he should uh, endure this situation with patience and be grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in either case whether you have or you don't have similarly but poverty think, and richness i think punishment is part of the test like well sometimes part of the sometimes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes his servants and his loved ones for even minor things they do in the life to purify them from their sins right away so that when they meet him on the day of judgment they will be free from any sins yeah i have a friend who wants to have children very badly and they supplicate they ask everyone to supplicate they pay for people to go to hajj and stuff like this to help them get children is this going to be of any use to them yes of course of course it does it does help uh, as a matter of fact, supplication and making dua is a very recommended act. And the Prophet ﷺ indicated in one hadith that a dua is mukhul ibadah. It's like representing the ibadah as a human body. And the brain which controls this entire body, this act of worship, is making dua, is supplicating. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ordering the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to inform us وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Whenever my servants ask you concerning me, inform them that I am close to them. 
very close, closer to us than our jugular vein. So if this is the case, then فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So let them respond to me. How? By supplicating, by making dua, and asking of Allah and Allah alone. Because as a matter of fact, it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is capable to give. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you cannot ask it from anybody else. Only from Him. Uh, we just mentioned, if you remember that, the dua and the supplication of Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the Most Merciful, is what? They say, رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنِ وَجَعَنَّا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا and I just remembered the prayer of Sayyiduna Zakaria, Prophet Zakari, peace be upon him, alayhi salam. When he reached an old age and his wife was sterile, and they were not able to have any children, and seeing that uh, Maryam was getting all the fruits summer and winter and off season, so he remembered when she reminded him that Allah provides for whomever he wills according to his will and wish. So he said, Hunalika da'a Zakaria Rabbah. قال رب هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة إنك سميع الدعاء. so it's like زكريا was reminded. then there he said رب هب لي من لدنك grant me from you ذرية طيبة a goodly offspring. إنك سميع الدعاء. you are the one who listens to the supplication. if this is the prophet of Allah زكريا is asking and begging Allah سبحانه وتعالى for having a child. What about us? I hmm. think we need it more than anybody else. Well, we should be honored either. Could we uh, make a dua like um, to have specifically boy or girl? Well, before I address this, uh, I need to mention something very important. People who struggle to have a child for years and they think that's it and they lose hope. If they just go back and remember how many years they spent visiting physicians and clinics and how much money they spent tremendous amount of money effort and many of them have never thought about knocking on the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying the most successful key which is supplication and dua exactly <laughs> exactly barakallah um, you're talking about uh, if one would pray and ask Allah for a particular gender a boy or a girl that's perfectly fine as long as the child is not there yet yeah. But if the child arrives and happens to be a boy or a girl, to a believer, it should not make any difference. Yeah, because I have a lot of friends that are dying to have boys. Like, and, if, and I have a friend of mine whose who's, who's wife is going to give birth, like, uh, maybe today or tomorrow, like these days. And he knew it's a girl. And he's panicking and he doesn't like it. And, you know, and I'm like, I'm telling you, why, man? It's okay. <laughs> like, like, you know, like, alhamdulillah, you, you have Aslan, you see, it's coming, uh, you know, like, exactly. you have a child that is coming, and she's, she's okay, inshallah, but she's okay, and she's not, like, mentally ill or anything, physically. All the parts are in the same place. Yeah, exactly, like everything that. is, 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 is so in the right are disappointed when a child arrives. I didn't want a boy, I want a Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> these are all acts of jahiliyyah and ignorance. Before Islam, uh, the pagans used to believe the same, that if uh, my wife gives birth to a girl, then I'm being unblessed. Mm. To the point that they used to bury their girls alive. I think what's Sayyidina known Omar. As Al Ma'uda. Right? Sayyidina uh, Omar. Uh, yes, unfortunately, in Jahili, and that's why Sayyidina Omar once was crying, mm. that he remembered that he buried his daughter alive. But that's why we said Al Jahiliya and Al Islam, we are ma qabla. Oh. Islam yeah. removes away whatever sins were committed before that. But the, the problem the is that to bring to Islam the acts of jahiliyyah, and you still have those false beliefs. For, for your friend, I would say, well, how did you come to this life? Through your mother, <laughs> a woman, a girl, right? Yeah. Mm. And your wife, how did you get married? To a wife, to a woman who gave birth. Imagine if everyone just wants boys, boys, boys. Life society would, would end. <laughs> yeah. Society would end because you have exactly. a bunch of boys. And exactly. here, really, we he's should. He's afraid, you know. He's just afraid of the, uh, of the, the trials and tests of a girl. Yeah, exactly. Well, girl, huh? listen to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying, "Fi surat al-Shura, Lillahi mulku al-samawat wal-ard, yakhluq ma yasha." 
يهب لمن يشاء إناثا ويهب لمن يشاء الذكور أو يزوجهم ذكرانا وإناثا ويجعل من يشاء عقيما This ayah is just addressing the subject exactly. To Allah belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ He simply creates whatever He wills. He bestows females to whomever He wills. He gives girls to whomever He wills. And He gives boys to whomever He wills. أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا And He bestows both, boys and girls, male and female, to whomever He wills. وَيَجَعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا and he renders barren whomever he wills. So having any children is from him. Boys or girls is up to him and up to his will. Not having any children is also, also up to him. Mashallah. Mm, so you should comply <laughs> with gratitude if you've been blessed it's a gift with a boy or a girl. Like, yeah. Exactly. Prophet Lut, mm. peace be upon him, had all girls, not, not any boys. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every boy who was born to him died. And I remember that when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's son Ibrahim died, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seen crying. But hey, listen, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was crying. There is nothing wrong with crying, but he did not utter any word of objection. Even though it was his only Why? son, he said, <laughs> truly, inna <laughs> al-ayna la tadma. My eyes are shedding tears. My heart is being saddened. However, we do not say anything that displeases Allah. We only say what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what would you say that would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this situation? SubhanAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah. Remember, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the patient ones. الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون whenever they've been afflicted with a calamity how do they react? Qalu. They say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah and unto Him we shall return. So if we ourselves and whatever we have belong to Allah, then why worry? Why being sad? So for them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them with blessings, mercy, and they are the truly guided ones. Um, hold on one second. I think someone's uh, knocking at the door. I think the kushri is here. Oh. <laughs> sure. I had a friend whose uh, child recently died. What kind of test is that? Well, there is a very nice and interesting hadith I remember concerning that. The Prophet ﷺ says that whenever angel of death takes the soul of a child of anyone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask angel of death and he knows best. He say, oh my angels, did you take the soul of the son of my servant? Say yes. Did you take the soul of the fruit of his heart? Say yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inquire from them and he knows best. And how did he react? Imagine having a child and it could be your only child. Your only son, then he dies in a car accident, dies while asleep, dies for a fever, or, 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 etc. So they said, Ya Rabbi, hamadaka was tarja. He praised you, was tarja, by the meaning he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We belong to Allah, and unto him we shall return. This is an amana which Allah deposited with me, my son. And he asked for it back. So, can do anything. Can do anything but to give up and say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say since he did so 
ابن لعبدي بيتا في الجنة وسموه بيت الحم build a house in paradise for my servant and call it the house of hand of praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, you know of course the story of Abu Talha and his wife Umm Sulaim may Allah be pleased with them they had a son who was very sick he had a fever and Abu uh, Talha had to leave for a business and trade when he came back he asked his wife Umm Sulaim how is our son the son had already died in his illness but she was a woman of righteousness she said he's very quiet better than before and she prepared for him a feast then she adorned herself the man was gone for a while so he embraced his wife with intimacy then after they finished their meeting she approached him gently saying Ya Abu Talha what is the case of somebody lent to us some money or an amana then he wants it back he said obviously we have to give it back to him she said well Allah have asked for his amana Allah took the soul of our son so Abu Talha was very angry not because the son died he was a believer but because she let him eat and embraced her sexually, then she informed him. I mean, this is a situation of sadness and sorrow. He should not be doing this. So he ran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he shared with him what his wife did, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, did she do so? He said, yes. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very impressed, happy, and he prayed for them. May Allah bless you in your night. In a sense that the supplication of the Prophet Sallallahu later on was responded to and Allah accepted it. So that the Sahaba said that we have seen Abu Talha and Umm Sulaim. Allah gave them a son. The Prophet Sallallahu named him Abdullah. And this son later on have nine sons who have all memorized the Quran. <laughs> Inshallah. Now, That's a beautiful story. This is, this is a tremendous test, especially now. you have a child and you wean that child, get up in the middle of the night, feed that child take them to school. Remember when I was a small boy, I lost my brother. He, inna was, lillahi wa inna ilayhi he was about 12 years old. And it was a big loss for the family. I was about nine. And it was a big test for my parents. My mother cried for many, many years. And as you say, it's a, a loan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this child to you. And now has decided to take that child back. Including mm -hmm. our own life. No, we have a great example that every, like, whenever, every situation that I think of happens with the Prophet, who is the most beloved one to Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Exactly. Islam is a complete religion. Yeah, a complete exactly. Way of life. Like, yeah. Now, what if you've done your best raising your child, and then your, your child's just, just, just bad, man? Just I know, <laughs> I know, I know. This is <laughs> a very, like very frustrating thought. It, it crosses my mind so many times, in the mind of every parent, every true Muslim parent. Because, you know, you try your best. You give them the proper education, you teach them the Quran, you teach them how to pray, and you follow the same footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu But truly, what if, that word if is very scary, what if they deviate? You yeah. know, whether it's a boy or a girl. You worship in a grave. <laughs> you turn your back. Well, one should remember that we're not any better than prophets. And one of the greatest prophets of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was Prophet Nuh. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa ala nabiyyina wa ala sa'ir al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen Prophet Nuh could not save his own son as the flood came he was calling on his son Ya Bunayyar kam ma'ana come get on board with us get on the ship or the ark with us he said no nay sa'awi ila jabalin ya'asimuni minal ma'am I'm gonna climb up this mountain which will save me from the water the father, Nuh, said to his son, لا عاصم اليوم من أمر الله إلا من رحم Nothing can save you today from Allah's decree except if Allah have mercy on you. وحال بينهم الموش Then the waves were very high and the sun was drowned. فكان من المغرقين Then the Quran informs us that the merciful father, Nuh, feeling pity, 
for his son, talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and called upon him. وَنَادَى نُوحٌ رَبَّهُ فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنَّ بْنِي مِنْ أَهْلِي وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقُّ وَأَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Nuh alayhi salam called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, please, that's my son, save him. He's been already destroyed in this life. He's been drowned. So save him from the fire of hell. Since he's from my family, he's my son. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him back saying, Ya Nuh, innahu laysa min ahlik, innahu amalun ghayru salih. No, he's not from your family anymore. He was not a righteous deed or a righteous son. In two dialects, innahu amila ghayru salih, innahu amalun ghayru salih. So in this case, one is only responsible for what you can afford. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in a very straightforward ayah, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not burden any soul or any person beyond their capacity. If this is as much as you can afford, that's it. If you try your best, this is all what Allah wants from you. And if they go astray, this is not your problem. But guess what? In most cases, if you follow the traditions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and if you're sincere in your intention in raising your children and bringing them the proper way, as Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala prescribed, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will never disappoint you and will reward you the best. InshaAllah. You know, Shaykh, sometimes um, you have children of both gender, and you may incline to liking one more than the other. Um, is this a natural thing or is this something that you have to work on to rectify? Let me tell you one thing. One should be just in dealing with his children, all of them the same. Sometimes one is inclined towards one more than the other. In certain cases, like a mother was asked, would you like any of your children than the others? She said, yes, I like the one and I love the one who's sick more than the others until he's cured. <laughs> <laughs> and I have more disorder. feeling towards one who's far away traveling more than those who are being around me until he comes back. So sometimes when a child is sick, you feel more sympathy and mercy towards him. And you feel like you want to serve him more than anybody else and so on. If you have a child who's handicapped or disabled, or of course that's natural to give him an extra care. But if all your children are the same, to treat them unjustly, this is a big sin. And you know that the Prophet ﷺ refused to witness to a gift that uh, a Nu'man's father, one of the companions, was giving his son a gift. Mm, so he Sheikh, wanted it looks like it's time for us to head to the masjid. So <laughs> cut you off. Well, but then. It looks like it's about that time for the Adhan to be called. Uh, so, inshallah, uh, we'll continue next time. Uh, and I guess we have to okay. uh, run for the salah. <laughs> May Allah accept from all of us. And I do not forget to end our meeting with a beautiful supplication. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa durriyatina qurwata a'yunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. Allahumma ameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk.